Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, today I'm trying a little experiment. I've been interested in VLF for years and years and years. Uh, VLF, or very low frequency, refers to the frequency range from 3 to 30 kilohertz. That's 3,000 to 30,000 cycles per second. Now that's very low, obviously. <laughs> um, the audio range that we can hear with our ears uh, in a young child with fresh ears is usually from 20 cycles, 20 hertz, to 20 kilohertz overlapping. And I, for years when I was younger, thought of those lower frequencies as audio frequencies. And it didn't occur to me that you could actually transmit at those low frequencies and receive at those low frequencies electromagnetically. Now, some years later, I got into metal detecting. I read about VLF metal detectors, and then it began to dawn on me that electromagnetic transmission and reception at those frequencies was a possibility. Uh, and then later on, I discovered that the uh, military actually uses VLF uh, transmissions to communicate with their submarines around the globe because of the ways that it can propagate. Their antenna systems are quite large. The, uh, the wavelength um, down at those frequencies is ridiculously long. Um, well, you can do the math to figure it out, but you know it's it's in many 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 miles. <laughs> uh, so they use all kinds of special schemes for their antennas. But what I was really curious about, um, and for years I've wanted to do to receive down at those frequencies. Uh, how would I do that? You know, uh, then SSDRs came along. Um, I read about other projects where people were using computer sound cards as a VLF receiver. Well, I happened to have an AirSpy HFS or HF Plus Discovery, and I was curious as to whether or not it would be sensitive down at that bottom end of the range. I mean, that's that's really low, and a lot of times the SDRs just don't want to work very well down there. So what I did was I made up a little pickup loop for the uh, HF Plus. And uh, for a signal source, well, I have a Garrett ATMAX metal detector. And this metal detector operates at 13.6 kilohertz, right down there in that range. This is the coil on the end of it. It's a double D coil, which means there's actually two coils. There's one here, and then there's one here, and they overlap in the center. One's a transmission coil and one's a reception coil. So it generates a signal on the one coil at 13.6 kilohertz. I don't know if it's modulated. That's another thing I want to find out. Um, and then it receives the signal on the other coil. And when a piece of metal is within the, the range of the coil, the characteristics of that metal resonate with that frequency, change, its, change the received signal a bit, and that's how it determines the metal. Um, the double D coil with this overlap in the middle that creates kind of a blade of sensitivity in the center of that coil. A round coil will have quite a broad area where it's sensitive, but with this double D design, you end up with um, sort of a, a knife-shaped or, or axe head-shaped area where that overlap is of sensitivity, so it's easier to pinpoint a small target right in the center of the coil. That's just a detail. It doesn't have anything to do with this video, but hey, you know, I thought I'd point that out. So I have a frequency source at 13.6 kilohertz. Let's uh, go to GQRX with the AirSpy and let's see if it can pick it up. Okay, we're all set up. Uh, I've got GQRX running. I've got the AirSpy sitting over here with the uh, little capture loop. I've just got this little BNC adapter and a loop of wire. We'll set that on the table here. And we'll start up GQRX. Oh good, nothing, nothing much, not nice and quiet. We can see some activity here. Birdies probably from the various devices around, but I'm at 13.6 and it's nice and quiet there. And I'll show you the screen in a moment. But first off, let's turn on the metal detector. Now it's going to be probably quite chattery because it's going to pick up all the metal that's around it, but let's see what happens. Whoa! There it, there it is! I can set this down. 
No. Nope. It wants to go nuts when I do that. Okay, I found a spot where it's not going to chatter too much. <laughs> not too much. But there it is, and it looks like either the air spy or the metal detector is a little off in frequency. Okay, I'm seeing it at 13.5. But uh, well, let's uh, move down and listen to it and see what it is. Sounds like an unmodulated carrier to me. Yeah. Okay. Turn that down. We don't need to listen to that. Um, it looks like it's just an unmodulated carrier. Uh, about um, 12.996... Thirteen point eight. Yeah. Okay. Just just over one killer. It's about. It, yeah. Okay. It's just a carrier. Uh, so yeah, the air spy is definitely picking it up. Uh, how about that? So the air spy is sensitive down at the VLF range, and uh, that's kind of cool. All right. I'm gonna have to build myself an antenna to do some VLF experimentation. Well, there you go. Uh, the Air Spy definitely can pick up signals down at that range. Um, I don't have an antenna that is really suited for receiving down there. And if I hook it up to my end fed wire, I get a lot of noise, a lot, a lot of local noise sources. Uh, so what I do want to do is I want to make myself a loop antenna uh, for VLF, which I'll need to order a few thousand feet of magnet wire, I think, uh, to wind a coil. Um, I don't know what I'll use for the loop. I might use a hula hoop again, maybe cut a slit in the outside edge of it so I can put the wire down inside of it and and, and wrap, you know, I, I'll have to do the math. I'll have to find a site that I can use to figure out the math and uh, calculate how many feet of wire, how many winds um, for that diameter, and then a variable capacitor to tune it and try to get it down there uh, and see if I can uh, receive anything with the air spy. Um, but that'll take a little work. <laughs> this, uh, this experiment was just to see if the air spy could even receive down there. And by golly, it can. So that's cool. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.